Hello, in this demonstration I will show you how to cast a plaster object in a simple mould. Now the object is a little terraced house, the sculpture, and I've just used very simple card but I've constructed a lip. This is to strengthen this edge um, because it's going to be a hollow cast and it's, it will also give me uh, a way of making sure I'm not going to make it any thicker than eight millimeters. I've already coated the inside with this uh, um, mold release wax. So what you do is, is get a soft cloth and then wipe all the inside with it and then buff it all out. Now I'm wearing nitrile gloves is because this if it smells very nice but it's not very good for you so it's best not to get it on your hands. So um, how to mix the plaster is the next step. So I'm going to put that to one side and I've got a bowl here of cold water. It has to be cold not warm, cold water. And I'm going to use a, uh, a plaster called Prestia Classic. It's a kind of universal plaster and is very good for this sort of um, simple plaster cast. I haven't weighed this so uh, the, I'm going to now add the water uh, to the water um, the plaster and I'm just going to sprinkle it in over the surface of the water. Now there can be a little bit of dust that comes off this so it is advisable to wear a dust mask and um, I think it's probably a good idea to wear um, eye protection as well. So I'm now just going to keep sprinkling over the surface of the uh, water, cold water. And as you may see that the plaster is just simply dropping to the bottom of the bowl. Now I've got to keep doing this until all the water is totally consumed. Must but not be any water. That way you know you've got exactly the right measurement. So there's no need to weigh this out. Just keep putting the plaster in until it's, it kind of forms a, um, a, a skin or film or crust over the top. By doing this sort of sprinkling it over the surface and not just tipping it in you will um, you will actually be able to stop creating bubbles or lumps in in the plaster so it is um, the best way to do it is just to sprinkle over the top of the surface so there's no water now there's a crust over it um, of plaster. So I'm not going to whip this up, I'm just going to sort of fold it in very gently and the bubbles um, will come to the surface. So when you're making casts, uh, bubbles are um, what you don't want on the surface. So it's, if you can get the bubbles out at this point, it's um, you, you get you will get a very good surface. So the, it's uh, mixing very well, there's very few lumps. If you want to use your hands that's fine but I would always advise if you're going to use your hands and not a spatula is to wear um, gloves or a barrier cream at least. Now it's, it's nearly there, it's a good mix, it's thickening up um, really well and it's now just about ready to go. Okay, so I'm going to use another spatula just to clean this off. I'm just going to put that to one side and bring back the mould. Now the idea is, is that not just to pour the whole lot in and then just leave it and 
uh, and just get a solid cast. The idea is to make this as lightweight as possible and only have the plaster as a hollow cast. So the plaster is going to be on one side at each time you do a set. So you, you achieve a kind of jigsaw puzzle, three-dimensional jigsaw puzzle, puzzle that then has a hollow. Um, there's lots of good reasons for that. One, it dries quicker, it sets quicker and hardens quicker. Two, it's just a waste of plaster, you're just casting a brick. So it's better to do it as a hollow cast. So this is really a transition cast to something else. So what I'm going to do now is gently pour this into the mould and hopefully the camera will see it which will be enough to do one side. So you can see in there it's gone to one side. And now I'm going to just move it by shaking it over the surface until it comes to the lip. You can just see it's coming to the lip now. And that was a good cast because it's come right up to the edge. Now I'm going to now just literally place it on its side a little bit there and then uh, leave that to set it will take about an hour and a half and then what I'll do is turn it to one next side and do that side and then keep going with this process until it is completely covered the inside is completely covered in plaster it is a bit time consuming but you do get a good result so I'll pause the film and then um, we'll come back to each stage as we go through. Okay, so what we have now is we have done the three sides and they're not completely set, not hard. So I'm going to have to be careful. Now I've done this funny shape is because it's this is the tricky bit is getting around this corner so I'm just going to put it there I've now mixed up uh, a new bowl of plaster and I'm now going to pour it in oops, without spilling it into this section here I try and keep everything as tidy as possible now I've got it down to one side but I've got to be a bit careful how I'm doing this so I'm literally moving it backwards and forwards. Now I'm going to use a spatula to help me with this and um, I, I use a, a stainless steel tool and I try and keep it as clean as possible so I'm now going to if I can get it into the camera, I'm going to push it up the side here. So I, I try and achieve the same measurement all the way round. So I'll we'll just uh, scrape that up. And... plaster is quite stiff so I can just sculpt it in place and then get round that that corner at the back. This takes a bit of time to do it but it's well worth it so you know that it's you've got an even thickness all the way round and this is why this edge at the bottom of the the um, um, mould is quite important so try and keep everything clean and tidy so it's nearly there. I'm trying to develop this corner here A 
as it starts to go off. And at one next point, what I'll do is I'll finish this off and then uh, let it um, go off a bit and then do the last part of the this part here of the mould. Now the plaster is um, a bit stiffer this time and I can now literally sculpt it in by using the trowel making sure that I've got an even thickness in the, in the mould so I'm getting right to the corner of that and joining it up with the, uh, the last side so it's all a bit green so um, you just have to be a bit careful what you're doing. I try and keep everything as tidy and clean as possible. So I'll just knock that edge. So it is possible with this kind of plaster to literally sculpt with it with the trowel. If you get the mix right. If you get the mix wrong you can't do that. And I've got a nice corner there. Just a bit more on the back. Do that again. Now I'll let this go off and it'll take about half an hour and then I'll just do the last bit which is the, the angle so then it's totally complete. So hopefully I've got a object, a plaster object, which is about 8mm thick. Just tidy up. Okay, so we've come to the end of this demonstration. Um, we'll just do the last bit. So you can see that all the sides have been given a, a, a coating of plaster so we're going to do the last bit and I've got some wooden chocks which is just to help me support it whilst I pour it in now I've done a mix here which I'll just show you and I've tried to knock out most of the bubbles uh, I think it's okay and as you can see, it's quite a stiff mix. So I'm just going to put a little bit in. Try and keeping it as tidy as possible. And now I'm going to move the plaster backwards and forwards until I get the desired coating, giving it a bit of a shake so the bubbles come to the surface or the inside of the mould in this case so there's an even set across it and hopefully it's only about four or five mil minimum and that looks good it's starting to congeal up now if you want to do more mixing a plaster. I have done a demonstration video of, of this process before and so if you want to view that and it might help. So now it's it is really going off really quite well and it's stopped moving as much so I'm just going to keep going and now I'm going to let that set and harden off completely for about 24 hours. Well, 24 hours has passed and um, it's exactly where I left it. 
it's really gone off nice and hard. So the next job is to take the um, packing tape and card off this. So I'm just going to remove the chocks and use a Stanley knife. Well this is quite exciting but also a bit worrying so I'm just going to go for it and see if I can split it down the seams. where I made it. Yeah, this is going to take some time to do. But it is coming off, so I'll keep going with this and I'll, you'll see stages as I cut it and I start the reveal of the, the mould. And as you can see, the, the detail's coming quite well. That's a good, nice, tight surface. And taking the roof off now, across the ridge. And it starts to become easier and easier once you start breaking up this kind of monocoque construction. That was the tricky bit. Well, I think it's now complete. So we have a house, it's got a few bits of tape still attached to it. It's a nice fat finish, it's quite lightweight, it's really good. So all I would do now is to use tools to clean it up and refine the shape but it may be that that's exactly what you want anyway just a cast as it is so what are the advantages of doing this well it's a quick mold you don't need a lot of resources to be able to do this so you haven't made it in clay so it's a quite a good mold uh, to do. Um, what I like about it, it's lightweight, it's a hollow cast and it will then dry out really quickly so if you wanted to paint it or do anything or just leave it as plaster it will then dry out. If it's a solid it never really dries out properly and it's just using up valuable plaster that you didn't need to do. Now this to me this is the transition piece which I would then make this really good and then perhaps move it on to a silicon rubber mold so you can make multiples of these sort of things so you could just keep replicating the mold well I think that just about finishes the demonstration I hope there's uh, some takeaways in it for you and thank you so much for watching